So this video addresses whether estate assets should be valued high or low after somebody passes away. Hey everybody, Paul Rabelais here, an estate planning attorney. This comes up quite a bit when somebody dies. You know, the survivors kind of want to play the system. You know, how do we value everything? We want to, you know, value it in a way that's most advantageous to us. There's tax consequences. Let's jump right in. So the tax consequences of, of how something gets valued, well, there's a couple. There's the estate tax. Most families don't have to deal with the estate tax. As of the time that I'm making this video in 2018, people can have up to $11.2 million of assets when they die and incur no federal estate tax, which by the way, when the tax does apply, it's 40%. So in those unusual circumstances where estate tax does apply, the family typically wants to see the assets valued as low as possible. And they have a business worth, you know, is it worth 30 million or 20 million? Well, if it's worth 20 million, then there's $4 million less of estate tax due. So you see how that works. Now, but in the typical everyday estate, there's no estate tax. The tax that comes up more often is the capital gains tax. So for estate tax, want to value it low. Capital gains tax, want to value it high because the assets get a step up in basis. What if those assets get sold sometime after the previous owner died? Those estate assets are going to be valued for purposes of, of the, the basis for capital gains tax as of the value at the time of death. So it becomes important. And typically, the higher the value, the less you know, capital gains tax will be paid when those assets appreciate and get sold down the road. So a couple of different valuations there. Um, I will tell you right up front, you know, there are certain things that, that there's no wiggle room, cash in the bank, um, money market accounts, savings accounts, CDs. The value is what it is. It's the account value on the date of death. There's no wiggle room with high or low. But however, certain assets are subject to subjective valuations. Things like land, real estate, homes, rental property, businesses are a big one. Those reasonable, you know, reasonable, reasonable minds can differ on the value of those things. Sure, if someone has a residence and it's in a neighborhood and uh, similar houses have sold in the neighborhood in the previous couple of months, not a whole lot of wiggle room there, but sometimes if somebody owns a couple of hundred acres of land or they own a business, I know assets can be valued differently. So the IRS has a rule for how estate assets should be valued or how to determine fair market value of an asset. It's the amount at which the property would change hands between a willing buyer and a willing seller with the buyer not under any compulsion to buy and the seller not under any compulsion to sell with both parties having reasonable knowledge of relevant facts. So that's how the IRS defines, you know, a fair market value. Um, so the analysis is um, really, you're, you're not supposed to play around with this. You know, if, if there is land or a business, there are people who are in the business of appraising those things using certain factors, and you're supposed to, you know, stick with the what is the actual fair market value. Nonetheless, people want to play the game anyway. If estate tax is an issue, people are typically want to see the assets valued low to avoid the 40% estate tax um, consequence. But if there's not an estate tax consequence, people want to see the assets valued high to get that increased step up in capital gains tax basis. So when assets are sold a little later, then there's as little or no you know, capital gain there for capital gains tax to be paid. Um, now, a couple of other points. Um, these issues are irrelevant when it comes to things like IRAs. People say, well, we're gonna get a step up in basis when we die on our IRAs. It's not the case. Whoever receives distributions from your traditional IRAs is going to pay income tax, ordinary income tax rates. There's no step up in basis when even when you know investments or appreciated assets are held in an IRA. Also note that some families you know want to play around with um, in the succession or the probate how the assets are valued on the detailed descriptive list. They're like, yes, let's put 
um, $100,000 for that 80 acres of land, yes, we just um, kind of nailed the IRS by putting that value on that detailed descriptive list. That's not the end all say all to fair market value. Of course, IRS is gonna go back to that willing buyer, willing seller definition. Also note that if there is a sale within a short period of time after somebody dies, there's really, and that sale is between you know, uh, non-related willing buyer, willing seller um, type of event, then there, there's no better um, determination of fair market value than when, you know, two uh, willing buyer and willing seller um, come together for, for a sale. So that often is really the, the determining factor when there is a sale shortly after somebody dies. So. There you have it, some of the um, kind of valuation issues when somebody dies. A lot of survivors think and want to play around with the numbers, but you're, you can't really play around with it. It is what it is. Uh, yes, the, the numbers that the estate and the representatives of the estate come up with will have potential estate tax and capital gains tax and perhaps even income tax consequences. So got to be aware of that as you as you take care of these matters. So hope that helps some on the should you value it high or low discussion after somebody dies. I'm Paul Rabelais. Y'all have a great day.